In this experiment, you'll be using cyclophilometry in two different ways. On day one, you'll be using it to investigate a redox couple, and on day two, you'll be using it to investigate a reaction mechanism. On day one, you'll be preparing a series of dilutions of potassium iron cyanide and um, potassium nitrate. You'll also be preparing um, a solution of potassium iron cyanide and sodium sulfate. On day two, there are two different buffers that need to be prepared along with a diluted acid, and you'll be using the buffers and the diluted acid as your solvents um, to dilute a solution of 4 acetaminophenol. There, there are lots of solutions to prepare in this lab, so it is very important that you come to lab prepared with all of your calculations, and teamwork will be essential in order to finish the lab on time. Once you have finished preparing all of your solutions, you are ready to purge to collect your first measurement. So all you need to do is take your solution and into a clean, dry um, jar cell here, pour it in. You want the volume to be about halfway so that when you stick the stopper in with your electrodes, the bottom of the electrodes are completely submerged in the solution. So once you put your stopper on, you can now walk over to the hood to begin purging your solution. So now you're ready to purge your solution with nitrogen. So I already placed the solution in the cell into this CV secondary containment. And I attached this clean glass pasture pipette to the nitrogen line, and I'm going to insert this into the top septum and into the solution. You want to make sure that you always are using a new clean pasture pipette for every new solution that you are purging, so we don't cross-contaminate solutions. Okay, now I'm going to turn on the nitrogen. So to do this, you probably want to hold on to your cell as you're turning the nitrogen because it can sort of have a spurt of high pressure right when you're turning it on. Okay. So I'm gently just turning it to the left. So as you can see, I have a nice gentle bubble here and this is what you are aiming for when you're purging your solution. You don't want bigger solution bubbling that it hits the top of the septum because then you'd have to clean the septum between runs. So you're going to purge this for about five minutes. So after you've been purging your solution for five minutes, you can cover it with parafilm and walk it back to your station to take your CV. So before you're ready to begin your experiment, you need to polish the working electrode. There's two working electrodes that you'll be using throughout this experiment. On day one, you'll be using the platinum working electrode, which has, as you can see, um, a silver shiny metal bottom. On day two, you'll be using a glassy carbon working electrode, which, if you notice, has more of a shiny, clear glass appearance to it. To polish the working electrode, I'm going to polish the platinum working electrode. You need to take about a pencil size amount of the 0.005 micron alumina powder and you place it on the polishing pad. Then you will take your water bottle and just squirt a little bit to make a slurry. Next you'll take your working electrode and you will polish it moving in a figure eight fashion while rotating the working electrode into your fingers. So I'll demonstrate. So I have my slurry, I'm making a figure eight, and I'm twisting the working electrode into my fingers. All right, that should be good. Before you use the working electrode, just make sure that you rinse it with DI water into the waste container so it is clean when you place it into your solution.
So when your solution is finished purging, you can turn on the instrument and log into the computer. So to turn on the instrument, it's really easy. There's just a switch that you hit at the back, and the power light will turn on. You can log into the computer. And once you're logged in, you want to hit the Chai 630 icon, which will open up the software. And you can maximize both of these windows. So to open up the parameters window, you just click on this icon here that says parameters. And this will open up the parameters for the experiment. So the initial voltage that you'll be using is 0.6 volts. And your high voltage is the same, 0.6. Low voltage is zero. We are scanning in the negative direction. Um, the scan rate that um, we'll be using is 75 millivolts. Okay. And you can leave the rest of the parameters set at the default for now. And if you encounter any problems or if your CV isn't turning out right, you can um, get a TA and they can show you how to adjust some of these parameters to obtain a clear CV. Okay, so when you set the parameters, you can hit OK. So now you can connect your cell to the instrument. So we have three electrodes here. We have a reference, a working, and a counter. And these are labeled with pieces of tape, so you don't have to know which one is which. So the reference electrode we attach to the reference electrode, which was the silver silver chloride. The working electrode, in this case, will be attached to the platinum working electrode. And the counter electrode is attached to the platinum wire counter electrode. So once you have connected your electrodes to your cell, you're ready to collect your CV. All you need to do is hit the run icon here. It's also a play button. And as you do that, you can watch as your CV is being collected. Now, this is not a typical CV graph. Um, the results that you get during the actual lab will look much different. This is just for demonstration purposes. All right. We want to give the graph a title here. So to do that, you're going to go to the file bar here, or menu bar, scroll down to graph options, and then all the way down at this header bar, you can type the name of your graph. So this one was a four millimolar. I recommend typing in the name of the concentration of your solution, the scan rate in which you took it at, and also what trial it is, since you will be doing three trials of each solution for your entire experiment. Also, make sure you don't include any decimal points or periods in your title, otherwise it will the CV will not save properly. All right, once you're satisfied with your title, you can just hit enter. And as you see, the title will appear on the top of your graph. So to save the CV, you can go to File, Save As. And you want to save it in a public space so every member of your group has access to it. So I'm going to save this under the local disk. Users, I'm going to scroll down to Public Users, Public. And then I'm going to save it in public documents. And I created a folder here. And again, the same thing applies when you're saving your file name. Um, you do not have any periods or decimal places, otherwise it will not save properly. OK. And then you can just hit Save. Now you're ready to move on to take the second trial of your solution. So once you're finished collecting CVs of all your solutions, you need to make overlay plots. So I recommend opening up a CV that has the widest y-axis, which corresponds to your current. Otherwise, when you try to overlay other graphs on top of that, it'll cut off the top and the bottom of your subsequent overlays. 
Okay, so I'm going to first open a CV data results file. Okay. All right, so I opened my results file. Now I'm going to make the overlay. So to do that, you go to graphics and then scroll down to overlay plots. And then you can select all the remaining graphs that you would like to overlay. So as you can see, as I did that, there's this key that's automatically created on the right-hand side of the screen, which corresponds, the different colors correspond to the different trials of your solution. So in this particular overlay, I am showing the 4-acetaminophenol and using the 1.8 molar sulfuric acid at 250 millivolts. So this overlay corresponds to the experiment um, dig 2 solutions. So you will need to make five more overlays that correspond to the 4-acetaminophenol solutions in the different, at the different scan rates and in the different buffers. So you'll have six different overlays for the day two experiments. And the overlays should look similar to um, the one that I have shown here on the screen. For day one of the experiment, you'll need to make three overlays. The first overlay, you'll have 12 different CV plots so over here on the right hand side in the key here you'll have 12 different CV trials shown and your first overlay will have three trials of your blank electrolyte um, potassium nitrate three um, three CVs of your blank electrolyte sodium sulfate you'll have three trials of your two millimolar potassium iron cyanide and sodium sulfate and then the last one will be three trials of the two millimolar potassium iron cyanide and the potassium nitrate. The second and third overlays that you'll make from day one correspond to the, um, the concentration studies that you did with the potassium iron cyanide and the last overlay you'll make corresponds to the two millimolar potassium iron cyanide studies that you did at the different scan rates.